How's it going guys? A Dragon Star Production here, back with another oh, what a video. And I've been sitting here thinking about how Future Trunks' story had a lot of missed opportunities. And I felt why not capitalize right after one of those opportunities, that being when Future Trunks defeats Deborah and Bobbity. So from training with Supreme Kai to training with Lord Beerus, this is what if Future Trunks trained with the God of Destruction, Beerus. <laughs> Recapping a brief gist of Future Trunks' battle with Deborah and Bobbity, we begin with Trunks, Shan, and Kabito all teleporting back to Earth in the land of the Kais, where they would actually meet directly in front of the two, Deborah and Bobbity. However, unknowingly to Shin, he had no clue about Deborah, therefore Trunks was not prepared to actually fight him. However, Trunks doesn't hesitate. He immediately powers up into Super Saiyan and darts towards Deborah. Quickly, Deborah shows to be quite the match, actually weaving majority of Trunks' blows until Trunks has to draw out the Z Sword. This gives Trunks an extra leg up on the demon, however, Deborah had a trick up his sleeve as well. With the wind of his neck, he then spits a massive spitball landing at the tip of the sword, giving Trunks no choice but to throw the Z Sword down on the ground. Unfortunately for the sword, it shatters, leaving everyone stunned, giving Deborah the perfect window to swoop in, shooting a blast, evaporating Kibito. Shin is floored, but decides to risk it all by rushing in at the two. However, Trunks snaps, having a breaking point, he powers up further beyond to Super Saiyan 2. This is the changing point that Trunks needed, as Trunks would then manage to easily get Deborah caught in a heat dome attack as Deborah crashes to the ground right next to a pissed Bobbity, who then demands Deborah to get up. However, he's not quite able to at this time because Trunks is staying on the attack. Bobbity is so enraged at this point, losing his cool, he didn't notice that Shin actually then starts using the telekinesis to lock both him and Deborah in place. Trunks then gets the opportunity to blast the two straight to Otherworld. Trunks drops to one knee, panting to catch his breath, when out of nowhere, two more bodies would actually swoop in inside a cube box. Trunks gets on guard, but Shin recognizes the being. Lord Beerus? As Beerus then begins to talk. Hello, Shin. You seem to have us in quite a mess. In fact, if I didn't know any better, I may have felt my life flash before me. But I'd be wrong, right? Shin is visibly scared, gulping a reply. However, Beerus cuts him off once again, saying that he watched the whole fight through Whis' staff. Beerus then, within milliseconds, pops right over, grabbing Trunks by the throat. Don't you dare ever risk my life for a criminal highlighter again, Shin. Tossing Trunks to the ground, forcing him to fade back to base. Shin tries to explain the situation that Trunks has been in, but Beerus doesn't care in the slightest. Trunks' eyes start to twitch, irritated that this purple pet is just mocking him and bullying Supreme Kai. But it wasn't until Beerus threatened to blow up the planet that Trunks once again unleashes an immense amount of power. Now back in Super Saiyan 2, the rage Trunks charges towards Beerus. Beerus wasn't expecting this amount of power to come from the half-breed, leaving himself open to get punched right across the jaw. And obviously, if you know Beerus, this causes him to boil and basically black out, beating the snot out of Trunks, and Trunks is unable to escape as he simply left there taking fists repeatedly to the face over and over. Luckily for Trunks, Shin steps in, freezing Beerus in place, screaming to just leave the Saiyan boy alone, and that if it wasn't for him, they'd all be dead, goners right now. Whis then decides to pitch in, mentioning that this is the son of Prince Vegeta, the grandson of King Vegeta, and that he very well could be the Super Saiyan God. Beerus scoffs at the idea of this. He argues that Trunks is too weak to be a god. Whis brings up how he was a mere mortal wielding the Z-Sword with great ability. Shin adds that Trunks has never had the true master besides himself. Beerus is about to decline once more, but he then turns around. Trunks somehow, someway is picking himself up off the ground, wiping his mouth. <clears throat> I'll do whatever it takes to save this world! This was the moment that won Beerus over. But he wouldn't just right out admit it, so he then tells Whis to deal with it. But for right now, he wants to take a small nap. With that said, Whis then crafts a cube around himself and Beerus with his staff, saying that he will return once Lord Beerus has fallen asleep. Shin then quickly runs over to Trunks, aiding him back to Capsule Corp, where Future Bulma would actually get a first aid capsule to immediately help doctor her son. Shin then drops the whole story to Bulma from Bobbity to Beerus, when boom, they're interrupted by Whis. Bulma panics, but Shin and Whis explain that he's completely neutral and won't hurt anyone. Whis laughs, well not intentionally, going on to tell Bulma that Trunks will have to come back with him to Beerus' planet if he wants to be trained by Beerus and himself. 
However, Bulma knows Trunks, and she's not quite sure if Trunks is going to like this idea. She very much knows that Trunks cares for his home and definitely wouldn't want to leave without a protector. Whis understands this and has a solution. Whis gives Bulma a way to call the staff at any point in time as Bulma is stunned. She still doesn't want Trunks to leave, so she tries to say that him and Beerus will have to wait until Trunks is fully healed to ask him. Whis again has a solution. With a tap of the staff, Trunks was 100% healed. In fact, thanks to his Zenkai, he was actually stronger than before. Trunks is then filled in on everything that's been going on, and ultimately, he sees it as a can't-miss opportunity. It's a guarantee that he'll get stronger, and he knows with threats always coming around the corner, getting stronger is always in Earth's best interest. Trunks then turns towards Whis, agreeing to go with him as he tells Bulma that he loves her and will call if anything happens. She hugs him and nods as Trunks is off to potentially become this timeline's first ever Super Saiyan God. Trunks, although thinking the training on Beerus' planet was easy, it wasn't what he was expecting. In fact, it was quite the opposite because Beerus isn't involved at all. Currently, he's taking a nap, while Whis, although is involved, he's not very hands-on, at least not yet. Trunks is having to move weights and exercise in a fat suit. You guys know the whole thing that Goku and Vegeta had to do before they actually started training with Whis. However, Trunks being the only one on Beerus' planet, he does have one thing going for him. Because he doesn't have a training partner, Whis has no choice but to actually start training with him, hands-on, in the near future. Trunks is clearly improving each and every day, but Whis is still managing to weave all of his punches and kicks with flawless ease as if they just started. But Trunks uses this for motivation, to keep pounding on his grind. Whis shows Trunks' improvements through his staff, however Whis does point out that Trunks needs to find out his true fighting style. Trunks would then note that he really hasn't felt like himself fighting since he broke the Z-Sword. Whis then waves his staff like a magical wand, creating a sword from thin air. Trunks begins to swing the sword, adjusting to its weight, as it's almost like he's been missing a piece of himself this entire time. Trunks then starts the training session as he and Whis are going back and forth. He can't manage to get a blow in when he then barely graces Whis' staff as Whis was dodging him. And we shows to be quite impressed. However, with Trunks getting slightly loud of excitement after, well, hitting Whis, he wakes up a pissed Beerus. That said, Beerus rushes right into Trunks' face, who immediately apologizes refusely for waking him up. Beerus shrugs it off, saying that Trunks is right. It was an accident, and then he should just relax. But so fast, Beerus spins around, throwing a right hook at Trunks, and so confident that his punch was going to connect, Beerus closes his eyes just to be shot as his fist collided with a straight block of Kachi, well, the sword, but Beerus opens his eyes to see Trunks' aura start fluttering to a fiery red, his hair glossed in flames. Beerus steps back, this must be the Super Saiyan God. We smiles in agreement, but Trunks is locked in and gives Beerus a grin. As the two then would begin to class as Trunks is giving his all, holding nothing back, he's fully understanding of the fact that Beerus has a lot of power in the tank, and his goal isn't necessarily to defeat him, but he's more focused on how fast he can drain the God of Destruction's energy. That said, Trunks uses the sword to his advantage because it has longer length than his arms, causing Beerus to rush in at different angles. Beerus though starts to get annoyed at the sword, and the more his frustrations build, the harder and heavier his attack blows and punches get. Trunks eventually gets the sword knocked out of his hands as Beerus then has the clear upper hand. However, Trunks thinks fast, using a solar flare, blinding Beerus. However, this was just a simple trick for Trunks to actually use his big technique, and he starts to burn together a burning attack. The godly burning attack actually manages to spiral all the way to Beerus, hitting him directly on. Beerus catches the fireball, though, with his hands, throwing it right back towards Trunks as he tries to weave, but the ricochet was too fast, causing Trunks to be swallowed in by his own blast. Beerus, thinking that this fight was over, shrugs his shoulder. He turns away. Trunks wasn't escaping the burning attack, but Beerus was quite shocked when a solid bright Mazinko comes rushing through the fire. Beerus was, well, once again shocked. Had Trunks really grown this much? His power kept growing the longer that they had fought, and Beerus charges up, showing a hint of his true power, launching the blast into outer space. As Beerus then looks at a drained Trunks, saying that he just one day might be a true worthy rival. Beerus then changes to worrying about Trunks to worrying about what he's going to eat. 
Weiss recommends that beers tries Earth Cuisines, that they're all so delicious as this annoys Beerus because, well, he's never tried Earth's food. However, Weiss replies that, oh, my lord, you were asleep, and plus, you told me to train the same half-breed that lives on Earth, who politely invited me to eat. This causes Beerus to then change his rage from Weiss to right back at Trunks. But Trunks quickly replies, my mom is rich. I can get you any food on Earth has to offer. This intrigues Beerus so much that the three then would head back to Earth and maybe just in time because a disc-shaped spaceship is entering the atmosphere as Trunks is explaining to Beerus what an Oreo is.